Well hello there everybody. My name is Cliff and I'm going to tell you a little bit about using computer control with DCC. And I'm going to do that with reference to the little demo layout that you can see on your screen now. This demo layout is something I was asked to do for a G-Scale indoor meeting and I thought I'd take the opportunity of uh, making this short film to explain how it all works. Now, this is something I've been asked to do by several people several times and never have so hopefully this will uh, fulfill this requirement. This is all currently running under computer control. The trains have been told where to go by me and the computer is following those instructions. The Boanina rail bus is currently in what I call the station area. It will leave that area and come round to the loop in the foreground. It will go round that loop using any route and go back to the station area. And it will just carry on doing that. The, uh, the green capette that's currently in the loop without uh, pulling any wagons. That will traverse around the loop where it is now. It will go to the top of the layout. It will reverse into the siding where the two tankers are. It will pick those tankers up. It will pull those tankers around into the station area. Once it's got to the station area, the engine will uncouple, go around the train, couple up at the other end, and pull the train Round, back round the loop and where it will then stop and uh, push the tankers into the siding. This is perhaps the most uh, interesting chain on, train on the layout. The uh, grey capette that you can currently see in the station area, that will go from the station area to the loop in the foreground and then the uh, hot metal car that it's either pushing or pulling will, uh, will operate. Now this is being completely computer controlled the computer is controlling the sound, it's controlling all the routes, it's controlling all the, all the different functions, the coupling and uncoupling, movement of the hot metal car, it's doing everything. And although you can't see it very well in this picture, at the top there, there's a, there's a, there's a solitary signal that the computer is controlling. I'll now show a, a speeded up version of this so you can get some kind of appreciation of how the trains are moving. And then we'll get into a little bit about how it works. Oh, I've been told that uh, you need a brain the size of a planet to understand computer control with DCC. However, that simply can't be the truth because, because I can do it. All of the equipment that I'm using here in this demo layout is uh, off-the-shelf stuff that you can buy in the shops. There's nothing specially made. All of the equipment is, is on the top of the table. There's nothing more. That's it. The only thing you can't actually see in this picture is a computer which is on the table at the top on the right. All of the wires that you need are also on the table. There aren't really a lot of those. The little boxes that you can see with, the, with yellow labels on top, all they are is connector boxes so that I can uh, take the layout apart quickly and put it together again when I've got to take this to an exhibition. But what equipment do we need to run our layout under computer control? The first set of equipment that we need is exactly the same equipment that we'd need to run our layout under manual control. Now because this isn't a DCTC tutorial, I'm going to 
skip through this pretty quick. But obviously we're going to need a command station. We're going to need something to control the points. In the case of my example out, we're going to need some electronics to control the reversing loop. And that's what you're looking at now. Now one of the crucial pieces of equipment that we need to, if we're going to control our trains via the computer, is somewhere to plug the computer in. And uh, with a system that I'm using here, the lens system, we need uh, this piece of equipment on the right here, which is surprisingly called the computer interface. On the right here, we have a USB connection into the computer. On the left, we have the connection to the throttle bus or the digital system. You'll also notice that in this picture, I've, I've uh, got a standard throttle for the digital system, which of course also plugs into the throttle bus. And you might wonder why I'm, I've done this. I've done this to show that these two devices are almost equivalent to each other. With this device here, you can control, or the user of that device can check, can control the speed of trains, uh, multiple trains, uh, can switch functions, change points, anything that the digital system can do can be done through this throttle. And similarly, anything that the digital system can do can be done through this computer interface here. You need a computer. Here's mine. And you need a computer program to run on your computer. And this is my favourite example. It's, it might seem complicated, it really isn't. You define things such as trains, points, signals, and then you uh, simply define the attributes of those and the relationships between them. Now I might have lost everybody by saying that, but I'll try and give you a quick demonstration right now. Now the screen on the left here that I've just highlighted and uh, I'm waggling the mouse around in is where you start. You draw a diagrammatic version of your layout and you do that by uh, pulling down these things at the top here so I could put some some straights in uh, a curve maybe uh, some points from here if I wanted and there we go I obviously don't need those now so uh, I'll delete them once you've defined your layout over here, you can define other things such as trains. Down here I've got what's called the train window, the window I've just highlighted on the right at the bottom. Uh, here you define your trains. And uh, if we just have a look at this, the properties of this train, the screen we're looking at here tells us the digital address of that train. This is one of its attributes. Um, this screen shows what we've called it, how long it is, what picture we're going to have for this particular train. We can define our own. Uh, and the functions that we can control on this train. Headlight, uh, whether the engine uh, sound is turned on, the whistle, the coupler, and, and so on and so forth. Um, 
So we have to set up the computer program with all of this information. Another thing we have to we might have to set up is information about points. So if we look at this point here, the properties of this point here, we can see that I have set this up for digital address 8. I've given it the very exciting name of point 8. Um, now this program has two modes. There's a sort of input mode and there's a sort of run mode. At the moment we're looking at the input mode. If I change it into the run mode, we can now run trains. So I could go here. This is the throttle for this particular train. There we go. I could move it and it'll go forward. Move it back again and it stops. Um, I can control the lights. These, these pictures here are the functions that the, 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 the decoder in that engine uses. Um, and I can define whatever picture I like in here. The ones with F I haven't actually defined a picture for yet. The other ones I have. It's all totally user configurable. Uh, for example, if I want to turn lights on, I can press this and the lights and the interior lights, that's the interior lights, the interior lights and the headlights on the burning a rail bus will change. Some cars might have uh, functions associated with them. This one is for the hot metal car. If I do this, it will tip over. If I turn it off, it will tip back again. Some of my uh, tankers that I've got in this demo layer have got uh, automatic uncouplers on. I can operate those by pressing this here. Operating points is simple. I come to this diagram, I click them like that and they will change. Yeah, that point changed. Here we go again. This point changed. This is the signal. I can click on the signal and it will change. When you control a layout manually, you use your senses, your eyes and ears, to assist you. For example, you need to know where a train is so you can slow it down so that it doesn't crash into another train. You need to know where a train is so that you can operate the points ahead of it so that it can continue. And it's no different with computer control. The computer needs some feedback to assist it in controlling the trains. The feedback that you need from your layout is often dependent upon the computer program that you're using to control it. Now the one I'm using here has a concept of blocks. A block being an area where only one train can be in at any one time. And it was also an area where a train can stop. So this might be a siding or a station or an area between two stations. The computer program needs to know whether a block is occupied or not. And this is done in my demo lab with occupancy detectors. The bit of equipment that you're looking at here provides eight occupancy detectors and it simply tells the computer whether the block is occupied or not. Now running... Um, trains manually via the computer in the way that I've just shown you may be all that you require. But most people use a computer because they want to operate their trains automatically. And to do that, this program uses the concept of schedules. I'm going to show you a little, about, a little bit about schedules now. This screen here defines the schedules. Down here We've got the, the names of all the schedules that are defined. If we look at a couple, let's look at this one. What this says is that this schedule comprises of the highlighted blocks, which is this block here, this block here, where I've just moved the mouse to, and also the connecting route between them. If I started this schedule, a train in this block here would move 
to this block here. The green highlighting here means this is the start block and this is where it's going to end. If we look at a slightly more complicated um, schedule, we'll have a look at this one. This one says a train starting in this block here would go to one of these blocks here. These are the terminating blocks and the computer would decide based on the movement of other trains, what blocks are free, etc., where it's been where whether it's been to that block before, which of these blocks it's going to take the train into. So uh, I'll demonstrate what happens. We'll just hide this screen. Um, this is I can put little buttons on here that start these schedules. So here we go. I'll start this schedule. I'll start this schedule. I'll start this schedule and the trains will start moving. It's as simple as that. Well I hope you've enjoyed my very brief and very basic introduction to computer control with DCC. Just sit back and enjoy. Thank <laughs> you.